Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Gloria. I am a customer success at the GetCoin team. And I just wanted to welcome you to the IoT X. You know what? How do you all say it? I always just call IoT X. Yeah. IoT X. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, welcome to their workshop session. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping before we get a little bit started. Um, this session is going to be recorded, so if you miss anything or you want to come rewatch it, uh, feel free to uh, go to our GetCoin Media YouTube channel, and it will be there. Um, also, if you want to kindly just say hi and where you're watching from in the chat, that's great. It's a great way for us to get to know each other. Uh, if you're looking for people or if you're having a great project, go ahead and throw that in the chat as well. I always love to see what you all are working on. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop that in the Q&A section and we can upvote them and share that as we go. Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to both Larry and Simone and they will go ahead and talk about uh, iTex, IOTex. Yes. IOTex. Thanks so much for it, Gloria. Um, hey, Gitcoin community. How is everyone doing out there? Really excited to be sharing this dev workshop with all of you. Um, excited to work with Gitcoin on the GR10 hackathon. You know, it's um, it's been a very long journey for us to get to where we are today at IOTEX. Uh, I've been building since 2017 and now have a lot of great tools and dev features for you guys to play with. And uh, especially through these challenges that we've issued during the GR10 hackathon. Um, so we're going to walk you through a little bit of an overview of IOTEX to start. Uh, I'm going to give that presentation, kind of share where the IOTEX network is as far as the technology, the platform and the ecosystem. And then Simone's going to do an in-depth hands-on demo about some of the great tools that we've had. Uh, recently, we just launched mainnet version 1.2, which brought full Ethereum compatibility, and that pairs very well with our cross-chain bridges and our unique IoT technology. So we're going to basically walk you through each one of those pillars and explain uh, how it works, how you can get involved, and what kind of bounties we have for you guys uh, to test your skills. Um, but yeah, Simone, you want to give a, a, a shout out before we get started? Uh, maybe introduce yourself as well. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Simone. I'm a developer advocate and dev community growth at IOTEX. I already see some people from our Discord channel joining. That's great. Thank you and welcome to everybody. And well, stay tuned uh, till the end of this uh, workshop. And yeah, excited to talk to you. Great, great. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for Simone's session of the workshop. My name is Larry, head of business development here at IOTEX. I'm going to be walking through a little bit just about what IOTEX does. So while I pull up these slides, um, great. So um, the, the, the kind of overview that I'm going to provide right now is just about building a connected world with blockchain and IoT, which is really the focus of what IOTEX is all about. Um, you know, a lot of people know IOTEX as a blockchain platform that's designed for IoT, uh, but you know, there's much more to that. You know, there's two ways to think about the world of blockchain and IoT. One is how blockchain can fix the traditional internet of things, you know, all these smart devices out there. It's all about security, privacy, interoperability, and gutting those legacy systems that have traditionally held our data, held our value, held our information. But that's a much long-term goal, right? Another near-term goal is how IoT, all these smart devices and all this data can impact blockchain today. And that's really about fitting real-world data into the dApps that we already recognize from prediction markets to NFTs to DeFi, Real world data has a place in all of that. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean uh, through this short presentation. Um, you know, just to start about IOTEX's vision, you know, the reason why IOTEX exists is very important to understand, right? You know, the Internet of Things is seen as this phenomena over the past couple of decades. You know, we've seen devices sprout up in our personal and professional lives to the tune of 50 billion devices generating 80 trillion gigabytes of data. A lot of devices, a lot of data. Um, by 2025. But the problem is all of that is it lives in Web 2.0 land, right? All these corporations that deliver us services, but also hold on to their data and do things behind the scenes with it, right? So corporations are in control of today's Internet of Things and not users. And, you know, for the past two decades, that's been OK. But now that we have blockchain and this technology that can provide not only an alternative to replicate the functionality of Web 2.0, but now we can bring IoT into Web 3.0 to make sure users, businesses, et cetera, are in control of their devices, control of their data, and finally, control of the value that the Internet of Things can provide. Um, the IoT 
you know, composed of all these billions of devices and data is a multi-trillion dollar industry. And if you think about, you know, complements or uh, kind of counterparts to the DeFi world with minor extractable value, we consider the Internet of Things to have a lot of extractable value from the machines, uh, what we call machine extractable value. Um, so what is IOTEX doing to enable this Web 3.0 for IoT future? We're building decentralized infrastructure, uh, not only the protocol, but also IoT oriented middleware and uh, other technologies like decentralized identity for devices in order to secure, connect and help users monetize self-sovereign machines at scale. Um, so this is kind of the reason why IOTEX exists. And, you know, when we started IOTEX in 2017, um, you know, these problems were just starting to be understood. But over the past three years, the need for security, the need for privacy, and the need to trust, right? Who do you trust and why do you trust? Also is very a big thing in the, in the human world, but even more so in the digital world, in the machine world, as a lot of these things start to become automated. Um, IOTEX, we work on a very interesting concept that we call proof of anything, right? And this goes back to the way that real world smart devices can impact blockchain today. You know, uh, blockchains need a source of truth, whether it's a traditional Oracle, you know, everyone's familiar with Chainlink and the fact that they bring trusted price data from different exchanges. IOTEX wants to adopt this same philosophy, basically combining historical data that you can grab from Oracles like Chainlink with something very unique to IOTEX, which is real world data. And if you think about, for example, a farm insurance smart contract, you need the benchmark of historical data but you also need the real time data to make those settlement decisions. Um, you know, DAOs are gonna be something that's very big this year. And if you think about it, humans are not involved in DAOs, but I guarantee you in the future, trusted devices to execute uh, commands, to feed data into DAOs, to progress them forward will be a very big thing. And this is why proof of anything is so important. If you wanted to prove something about something you've done in the physical world to a smart contract, then you can generate actions in the digital world. Things like proving your presence to mint an NFT, which is a use case that IOTIX is working on, or proving your health, proving your healthiness to get insurance benefits, or proving your safe driving in order to uh, get some benefits on that side. You know, this real world data, things that actually happen in the real world can be translated into blockchain ready speak. And this just pr provides a nice bridge, a nice gateway between the digital and the physical world. So the technologies that IOTEX has strung together in a layered approach, uh, starting with blockchain, right? DApps and smart contracts. We have identity, we have real world data oracles, we have secure hardware, but each one of these layers performs a specific goal in this tech stack, right? Secure hardware is used to grab trusted and verifiable data. If you grab data and put it on a blockchain, but it's not verifiable by anyone, it's not really useful, especially in an open setting. So secure hardware, like this device we have here called Pebble Tracker, which I'll explain a little bit more, has secure hardware, just like the chips in your phone that do your biometrics, the chip on your credit card that does your spending credentials, the chip in your ledger wallets that protects your private keys. This is a way to generate verifiable data from the real world. Then we have an Oracle to really bring this into blockchain ready speak. And then finally, compartmentalize, compartmentalizing this data into digital data lockers, which we call DID, decentralized identity, so that devices and users can also own their information. And finally, once you lose your, once you own your information, you can opt in to share that information with different decentralized applications for self-service to pool your data together into digital assets um, and just monetize that in different ways in the IoTech ecosystem. Um, you know, the blockchain itself uh, is very robust. We built this since 2017. Uh, it's fast, it's secure, and most importantly, it's EVM compatible. We had a recent launch called Mainnet version 1.2, where we basically built full Ethereum uh, capabilities or compatibility between IOTEX and Ethereum. So you can start using your favorite Ethereum tools with no configuration and port your Ethereum Solidity-based dApps to IOTEX in minutes, again, with minimal configuration. So all the tools you're familiar with, like Truffle, MetaMask, Graph, uh, Hardhat, you know, all of them are very easy to use now on IOTEX, which just expands the developer capabilities uh, quite a bit. So um, throughout this presentation, you know, Simone's gonna dive much more into the different tool sets uh, that can be leveraged by builders um, on our blockchain. Um, also important is, you know, not only do we have this blockchain, but we've also built what's called a self-sovereign machine protocol. 
how do you give devices an identity? How do you allow them to interoperate with each other? Everyone daydreams about these human to machine and machine to machine transactions. But the real foundation of that is identity and the ability for other devices to trust other devices, right? And this is really where um, this kind of framework comes into play. And if you guys are interested in building with this, we have a really awesome bounty uh, related to the Pebble Tracker device where you can start to own your data, simulate some data sets, and start to plug them into different uh, decentralized applications. Um, you know, another big part of IOTEX is, you know, we, we are a layer one blockchain, EVM compatible, built from scratch, which is very important, no forks. But we don't see ourselves as competitors to other layer one blockchains. We really want to be a collaborator in this multi-chain future, which is why IOTEX has focused a lot on our cross-chain capabilities. We now have two-way token swaps between Ethereum, uh, Binance Smart Chain, and recently announced Polygon. So three of the top largest blockchains in the world, IOTEX has two-way token swaps, and we're working on cross-chain contract calls to these blockchains as well. To really position IOTEX as the hub, the central hub for IoT data for the IoT universe, or for the blockchain universe, rather. Um, so again, the challenges in this Gitcoin hackathon will allow you to uh, build a dashboard to visualize these two-way token swaps between IOTEX and these top blockchains and also get you really up to speed on you know, the sophisticated bridges we built, uh, which is another important aspect of IOTEX. And finally, um, the last pillar, uh, last kind of things I wanted to chat about is kind of the status of devices on the IOTEX network. Um, you know, right now there's about 5,000 plus devices being run on the IOTEX network. One of them is called UCAM, and UCAM was a consumer facing product that we built alongside a major uh, security camera manufacturer back in uh, September of 2020, we launched it on Amazon, and it's gotten a lot of great, a um, lot of great feedback already. So, if you haven't checked it out yet, you know, UCAM is the first self-sovereign machine which allows users to exclusively own their data. There's nothing more sensitive than the things you do uh, in your home. So, definitely check out UCAM at ucam.iotex.io. And finally, we have Pebble Tracker, which is our newest device. It's definitely oriented towards developers. It's open source firmware, open source code, open source backend to really allow you to build this into your applications in a very needed way. You know, a lot of the people that are building with Pebble Tracker today are doing things in asset tracking, whether it's medical supply chain or remote monitoring. Um, you, people are also using it to count steps for different healthcare apps. Um, it's going to come in a nice, sleek, uh, consumer facing case, but it's, it was designed for developers. It was built for developers like you, and it's going to be shipping uh, very soon, uh, probably in late July or early August. Due to the massive chip delays out there, it's been a little delayed, but we're really excited to get this device out there in your hands. And the best part of this Gitcoin hackathon is we've built a really awesome simulator tool that's going to allow you to replicate or emulate data as they would come out of Pebble Tracker and start to build it into your decentralized applications. Um, as I mentioned, you know, the IOTEX network is booming with devices. We've covered 5,200 devices over 60 countries already. And um, yeah, the ecosystem is also growing. You know, there's so many different aspects of the IOTEX ecosystem. We're not able to cover them all. This one's definitely more focused on developers. But whether you're a developer, whether you're a node operator, whether you're a general user, or just someone curious in how the internet, how blockchain is going to impact how we use smart devices in the future, how we uh, assess our data, and you know what Web3 looks like for IoT, definitely check us out more, iotex.io. Uh, but I'm gonna pass it over now to Simone for the meat of this presentation, and he's gonna walk you through a hands-on demo of all of our IoTex tools. Um, and after that, we're gonna leave some time uh, for Q&A. So definitely stick around for, for the last session. But Simone, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Um, okay. for your awesome Thank moment. you. Let me try uh, to share my screen. Mm -hmm. Let's share screen two. Is it sharing? Um, I do not see it right now. Let me try. I think you could share your full screen. Yeah. Uh, now, browser is not permitted to share screen. Oh, sorry. This is going to take one minute, I think. No problem. No problem. Okay. I think in the meantime, I can kind of walk through some of our uh, Gitcoin bounties or see if I can pull them up here. 
Yeah, so we actually do have a nice little medium document where we kind of outline some of the challenges. Um, I'm going to drop this in the chat here. Um, but basically, we know we've we've carved out a lot of different. We we really brainstorm how to make this the most diverse uh, kind of uh, hackathon possible. And um, you know, one thing is uh, let me see if I can share my screen here while Simone is getting the presentation up. Specific window. I think Simone, maybe you could try to share a specific window instead of your whole screen. Maybe that would uh, let you do. Uh, yes, it's possible. Let me see. Great. But so while I Simone's think... pulling that up, you know, I wanted to walk through some of the um, uh, the bounties that we have. So you know, IOTEX is very proud to be a core sponsor of the GR10 Hackathon, along with many other top blockchains out there. And I think, regardless of what's going on in the price, I know everyone's interested in that. It's great to see the number of developers and builders really flooding into the the blockchain industry. So you know, we really tried to make these challenges more diverse. Um, it really span. Um, all of the different aspects of IOTEX, right? One is, you know, the important part is the our focus on real world data, right? Powering a D app with real world data. This is going to allow you to use Pebble Tracker, our simulator, uh, which I can kind of flip over to GitHub in a bit, that generates sensor readings and really emulates what the data is going to come out of the Pebble Tracker uh, in the physical form. So we have a whole library of really great um, ways to use this simulator and really get a head start on, on Pebble development. Um, the other one is around the cross-chain bridge. Uh, we want uh, you guys to help us build some analytics to really visualize what's going on in the cross-chain bridge. There's a lot of volume already happening, and we really want to see uh, some sleek designs to show the statistics and show the activity and really highlight that for everyone. And finally, this one's the last open-ended one, is to really port a Solidity-based dApp to IOTEX using our new suite of Web3 tools. As I mentioned, we have a new Bobble Web3 API that provides full Ethereum compatibility. So bringing your favorite Ethereum dApp or your own custom-built Ethereum dApp is something you can do on IOTEX uh, in minutes with no configuration. So um, yeah, so those are some of the challenges there. Uh, Simone, how's the, how's the video coming along? Uh, I should be fine. If you, uh, you should um, disconnect, yeah, not exactly. Sure. Let me try. Let me. So if the screen, awesome. I yeah, do see I, it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if the screen is too small, you, I think you have an icon top right of the image, uh, where you can go full screen. Mm -hmm. So let's start from a general view of the IoTex platform architecture. The foundation layer, of the IoTex platform is the blockchain. The IOTEX blockchain implements an in-house um, version of the delegated proof-of-stake consensus mechanism. We call it Roll Deposit. It's um, more decentralized, more secure, and more um, scalable version of the delegated proof-of-stake consensus mechanism. It provides a five-second confirmation time and instant finality for transactions. This means that when you broadcast a transaction to the network, after around five seconds, it gets into the first available block. And this confirmation is final. You don't have to wait for more blocks uh, for your transaction to become more and more uh, trusted to the chain. The ITEX blockchain implements the Ethereum EVM uh, virtual machine. This provides smart contract functionality to the blockchain. And thanks to this smart contracts functionality, the IOTEX team implemented middlewares uh, like a unique decentralized identity definition, which can be applied to people, businesses, and machines. And also a unique um, on-chain tokenomics for machines that we call bar and drop. And it's intended to incentivize the security of the network when more and more uh, IoT devices get added to the blockchain. Now, on top of this decentralized foundation, uh, there is a growing ecosystem of decentralized applications. The most important ones are the IoT bridge, the NEMO decentralized exchange, the Cyclone Anonymity 
uh, protocol and many more. Now let's draw an ideal line between the real world and the blockchain world. In the real world, we have an infinite amount of data that gets produced uh, every single moment. Uh, unfortunately, this data cannot be easily um, leveraged inside blockchain applications. And the reason is that this data is not trusted. So INFX defined a verifiable data protocol that is based on secure hardware and that allows uh, these devices to produce verifiable, trusted data that can be used into blockchain smart contracts to generate trusted decentralized application based on real-world data. Now let's draw another imaginary line in the blockchain world to separate the IOTEX blockchain from the other blockchains. Thanks to the IO2 bridge, if you develop a native application on IOTEX, your application can easily be extended to other blockchains. Uh, at this moment, IOTube supports Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, and Polygon. And more chains will be added in the future. Uh, an example of using the IOTube bridge is the Cyclone Anonymity Protocol. The Cyclone application is native of the IOTEX uh, ecosystem, but it's defined on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain too. And thanks to the IO2 bridge, the Cyclone token can be freely moved between IOTEX, Ethereum, and Binance Smart Chain, allowing the Cyclone application to be used by uh, a huge amount of people, regardless of which blockchain they prefer to use. Okay, now let's take a look at how we can deploy decentralized applications to the IOTEX blockchain. I will use the official documentation website docs.iotex.io so that you can find uh, references to what I'm telling you. Uh, the first useful uh, tool for an IOTEX developer is the command line client that is called IOCTL. In the documentation, you will find a link to uh, a quick start for the IOCTL command line, but let's take a quick look at how we can use it. The first thing you do with the, to be able to use the IOCTL tool is to point it to an IOTEX uh, gateway to interact with the, the blockchain. We can use the official IOTEX uh, gateway endpoints, uh, which are available both for testnet and for mainnet. So let's point our IOCTL uh, tool to config set endpoint to the IOTEX mainnet. So api.mainnet.iotex.1 column 443. Okay, and now we can already start interacting with the IOTEX blockchain. For example, we can do IOCTL BC info and get the current height of the blockchain and the current epoch of the blockchain and so on. We can also manage accounts. I have already created the two accounts on this system, so I can do IOCTL account list to see my blockchain accounts. I can add a new one with IOCTL account create add um, test account set a password set password again and now IOCTL account list we have three accounts. We can easily for example, transfer tokens from the development account to the personal account with IOCTL action transfer. Uh, destination address is personal, uh, amount is one IOTEX, and the signer for this action is the dev account. Click enter, and we are asked to input the password for the signer, and of course, this uh, transaction will fail because there is no uh, balance for the dev account. Um, I'll give you one more example. For example, if I want to check the status of the transaction and I know the hash for the transaction, I can simply do IOCTL action 
uh, hash and input to the hash of the transaction and hit enter and it gives me the status of this transaction. So this is all regarding IOCTL. On the documentation website, you find all the reference for the IOCTL tool from installation to using it for any type of uh, blockchain interaction. Now that said, let's move on to obtaining test tokens. When you develop a decentralized application, uh, you usually don't want to do that on the mainnet. Uh, of course, you risk to lose a lot of money. So the best way is to deploy your uh, test version of the application on the IOTEX testnet and obtain some test tokens uh, on the testnet. To do so, we have uh, um, an official faucet. We can open it. We need to log in with Google. And once you logged in, you just input your uh, account address. Let's use our TL, IOCTL accounts list, our dev account, and choose the, the network, verify, and submit. Okay. Here is the receipt for the transaction. And if we check our dev account on the testnet, so IOCTL config set endpoint API dot testnet dot IOTEX dot IO colon four four three IOCTL account balance dev account. Again, uh, your CTL account balance. Sorry, I uh, use CTL one account balance, and my balance is one thousand IOTEX on the IOTEX testnet. Okay, let's move on to actual decentralized application development on IOTEX. As I already anticipated, the IOTEX is 100% Ethereum compatible, both in terms of EVM, which means you can use Solidity to develop your smart contracts, and in terms of the actual uh, node API, which means you can use any Ethereum tool to interact with the IOTEX blockchain transparently. Uh, by just pointing this tool to the IOTEX uh, uh, Ethereum endpoint rather than to an actual Ethereum endpoint. Let's see this in action, for example, with uh, MetaMask, okay? I will install MetaMask for my browser. Okay, and now that the extension has been installed, I can get started. I will create a new wallet, set a password, I read terms of use, create. Now, this is my uh, MetaMask wallet on my Brave browser. It's here. Okay. Um, now, let's see how I can configure this MetaMask wallet to interact with the Artex blockchain. Basically, I just have to input this configuration in the network settings. So I can go to MetaMask, custom RPC. I will call my custom network Artex testnet. The URL is bagel.com dash api.testnet.iodex.io for the testnet and here mainnet for the mainnet. The chain ID is 4690 for the testnet and 4689 for the mainnet. So let's select this one. For the symbol, I will use IOTXT and the URL of the uh, block explorer is testnet.iodexscan.io. Save it, 
and done. Here I have a new network, IDEX testnet, and I make sure it's selected. And my MetaMask is now showing me the balance of this account on the IDEX network. Now, let's do something uh, interesting. I want to um, send some test tokens to this account. So I, will, I want to copy this account and, for example, get back to my IOCTL client and use my dev account here, IOCTL accounts list, to send some tokens to this account. As you can see, the Artex accounts representation is quite different from the Ethereum accounts representation. Let's see it side by side. You see, it's totally different. But actually, that's just a different representation of the same um, public key. So there is actually a quick way to switch between one representation and the other, depending on if we are using a native IOTEX tool or an Ethereum tool. For example, I can use IOCTL, account, is arch, and input either the Ethereum representation or the IOTEX representation of an address, and it will provide both representations of the same address. So let's say I want to send 100 IOTEX from the dev account to this account. I will do IOCTL action transfer 100, uh, sorry, the recipient account is this one, 100 IOTEX, and I will sign with the dev account. Enter password, confirm the transaction, and here is the hash of the transaction. Let's check it. IOCTL action hash. And the action is confirmed. Indeed, if I move to my MetaMask, I see that I just got 100 IELTX test tokens to my account. Cool. Now let's move to the Remix IDE. Okay. How we can use the Remix IDE with IELTX? This is very easy, actually. Let's open it. Remix IDE. Let's create a new file under the contract folder. Uh, and I will call it simple token dot so okay open the file let's copy paste the code for a simple ERC20 token uh, which by the way in IOTEX are called XRC20 uh, so I will use this source code which basically imports uh, the standard uh, ERC20 implementation from um, Open Zeppelin. So I'm importing directly from their GitHub and uh, initializing the contract with the simple token name, the symbol, symbol and 18 uh, dec decimals. So let me copy and paste it. Okay, uh, let move. Now let's move to the compile tab. This contract wants solidity 0 0.5.0, so I will select here 0 0.5.0, and I will click compile simple token dot solve. Okay, great. Now that the contract is compiled, I can move to the deploy and run transactions tab. And the trick here is to tell Remix that you want to use the injective web tree uh, as the provider for deploying and interacting with blockchain, which means basically to use MetaMask. 
So I will connect MetaMask to the Remix ID, make sure that MetaMask is set on the Artex testnet or mainnet. And now I can click deploy to deploy the contract to the Artex uh, testnet. Click confirm. Let's wait for the creation of the contract. Great. After a few seconds, the contract is deployed and we find it in the deployed contracts uh, panel. We can just expand the panel, find, the, for example, the balance of, and let's input the creator address, this one. As you can see from the code, it's basically upon deployment, it's simply minting the whole um, amount of the of the, the, the token uh, to the message sender, which means to the contract creator. So let's click balance off and see the result. So the result is that we have the whole total supply of this token into our account. Where is it? Where we cannot see it because the token is not added to uh, to MetaMask. So let's expand the view. And let's click Add Token and pick the contract address for our just deployed token and input in MetaMask. Great. Click Next and here it is our token with the whole total supply into the balance. Here it is. And we can also basically send it to a different account on the Antex blockchain. Cool. Okay, so now probably you have already guessed how it works, but let's take another look, uh, for example, at uh, Truffle. Okay. So once you install Truffle on your um, system and you did all your development and testing using Ganache or any other tool together with Truffle, and you're ready to deploy to the ITEX network, uh, you only have to make a, more, a small change to the Truffle configuration. Uh, let's see how we can do that. So let's unbox the a standard MetaCoin example from Truffle. So make their MetaCoin, change directory MetaCoin, and Truffle unbox MetaCoin. Now, let's say we are ready uh, to deploy our contract to the testnet. So the only thing we have to do is to edit uh, so let's say nano uh, truffle config.js. And we want to edit this configuration and replace it with this one. Actually, I will use the private keys, the configuration that makes use of the private key. And for the private key, I will use the private key for our dev account. So IOCTL account export dev account. Here is the private key and sorry. And I will put it here. For the provider uh, as the endpoint, our Babel API endpoint for the IPEX testnet. Similarly to what we did uh, for MetaMask. Okay, network ID is 4690 for the testnet. Just make sure you set the correct um, gas 
price and limit, which is a little bit higher in terms of preset for the Altex compared to Ethereum. And let's save. Okay, and now we can simply do truffle migrate, oh, sorry, migrate, reset, select the network dev, and hit enter. This will compile and deploy uh, the Metacoin contract to the Altex testnet. Okay, excellent. So Truffle deployed all the required contracts and shows us all the information for each deployment. Of course, where you read it, it's of course uh, IoT. Uh, let's move on and take a look at our DApp Starter, which is a very useful tool to get started with uh, um, DApp development on, uh, on IDEX. IDEX provides this DApp Starter, which basically uh, features uh, a fully working example that is already integrated with uh, the most popular wallets, uh, like for example, MetaMask. Uh, and it also supports um, switching between multiple chains. So if your uh, decentralized application is supposed to be cross-chain, and so you make also use of the IoT bridge, then this is the perfect choice to get started with the UI of your application. Getting started with this the app is very simple. Just let's clone the repository. So git clone IOTX the app sample version two. Let's move into the uh, IOTX the app sample version version two. Type yarn install. Uh, yeah, uh, I think we need, uh, yeah, we need, uh, to use node bigger than 10.16. So let's do NVM use LTS to use the latest node version and again type yarn install. Okay, then run yarn start. And indeed it's up in four seconds and we can now type local host 3000s and here we go with our IDEX app. It already connects to our MetaMask it recognizes MetaMask address. It says we are on the Altex testnet. It gets the balance. You can switch to the night vision. And here you have an example um, feature that allows you to interact with ERC20 tokens. Actually, we are on Altex, so these are XRC20 tokens. So let's open this page. Uh, you can basically send any token to another address from this page. I don't have uh, tokens in, in my wallet. Perfect. Now, before we move on to the questions and answers section, uh, I want to spend a few more words uh, regarding the secure hardware and our verifiable data protocol. What it is and so what you as a developer uh, can do with it. Uh, first, I want to point you to the crowd, crowd supply page of the Pebble Tracker. Pebble Tracker is the first uh, implementation, uh, the first hardware product that makes use of the IOTEX uh, verifiable data protocol which allows real world data to become verifiable and trusted and so um, be used into blockchain 
applications with full trust. And so trigger on-chain actions, um, mint tokens, or whatever you want to do with your uh, real-world data. Because actually, um, sending real-world data from a device to the blockchain in itself is a very easy thing to do, and you can do that with any blockchain today. The problem is when you want to go into production, at that point, you need that that data is trusted. Uh, and making that data trusted is not an easy matter. Um, what the, the IOTEX verifiable data protocol does is define a cryptography uh, specification that allows, uh, together with secure hardware, uh, to, to provide uh, a stream of secure IoT data messages that are trusted and verifiable by anyone from the source to the blockchain contract that makes use of it. So let's take a quick look at uh, Pebble Tracker. In the technical specification, I want to show you the data message of Pebble Tracker. This is how a verifiable data message looks like when it's generated on a Pebble Tracker device. Basically, you have all the sensors values, uh, and additionally, you have some cryptographic signature into the message. Uh, this signature is generated on board from a secure element. And I'm introducing you to this concept because on Gitcoin we have a bounty uh, that's exactly about this concept. And I believe it's very interesting uh, project to work on. And it's this one. Port, oh, sorry, power your D app with verifiable real world data. And uh, in this bounty, we also added some references uh, about how you can verify a data point from Pebble Tracker and implement your uh, decentralized application using uh, verifiable IoT data. So, yeah, with that said, um, I think we can move on and go to the questions and answers session. So, we can hear you. No, for some reason we can't hear you, Larry. But um, if you all have a question, uh, feel free to drop it in the chat. And I'm sure that Larry and Simone will um, answer the questions that you have. So let me. Yeah, sorry for the audio. It was a bit poor, I believe. But uh, yeah, we will upload a better resolution video on YouTube. I heard everything loud and clear, so maybe. Uh, okay, maybe. great, great. <laughs> Glad to hear. Yeah. Uh, so we do have a, a question from uh, Stano, and it says, "Does IOTX have uh, any competitive advantages in terms of speed, latency, data throughput, etc., compared to other blockchains?" I mean, if some IoT use cases require high data throughput and low latency, how does IoT, IoT X uh, handle it? If those are the usual you know, things that they're concerned about. Yeah, so uh, IoT X was built with uh, you know, high scalability, uh, security, and all those things in mind, right? Um, the blockchain itself is very fast. We use a roll post consensus mechanism that we built in-house. And it basically does five second blocks with instant finality. So you don't have to wait multiple confirmations like in a Bitcoin or Ethereum kind of transaction. And that's also kind of, you know, uh, by design, right? Um, the other thing that's very, very important to know is that, you know, a lot of times the base layer blockchain is just a settlement layer, right? A lot of the things that we do with this trusted hardware is to verify not only the data that they send to the blockchain, but also the actions that they take uh, on uh, data. So things, specifically like data validation, um, data sequencing, you know, uh, making sense of the data off chain before putting it on chain is another way to scale, right? So the way I think about it, you know, you can think about these 
uh, verifiably trustworthy devices that have IOTech's identities in the future as almost a layer two, right? They are the ones that are translating what's happening in the real world, um, doing some post, uh, do some processing exactly on the device uh, before it's uh, kind of put onto the blockchain. And this is a concept that's already very well understood in the IoT space. It's this concept of edge and fog computing, doing things on the sensors themselves or the gateways before it goes to the server. But rather than going to a centralized server, it's kind of being persisted on the blockchain. So in this end-to-end -end flow, um, the verifiability, the provenance, and the trust is very, very important. But it lends a lot of the scalability aspects also from the IoT space. But you know, for anyone that's tried IoTex, uh, building dApps on it is very, very fast already. Uh, Simone, I don't know if you have anything else to share um, on the technical side. Yeah, just a few words. We don't have to think of blockchain like something that has to be ultra fast in terms of the milliseconds necessarily, because you are not going to use blockchain for those type of application that requires hard real times. That's still a network protocol. It's made for something else. You need speed, you need very fast speed, but as soon as you have uh, fulfilled the, the usage uh, of whatever you need for uh, decision-making, authorization, payment, whatever it is, you are not going to control a robotic arm transferring data on the blockchain, right? It's an expensive, uh, tool that basically provides redundancy and this is expensive in terms of uh, storage and also time because anyway it's a network protocol so it has to be fast but it doesn't have to go into the milliseconds fast because that's not what it's built for it, it's mostly cryptography that's it's great about cryptography that's it blockchain it's not uh, something where you want to stream data you want to authorize data you want to put a hash of data and things like that, right? So you have to think to blockchain in these terms. That's a great point. That's a great point. OK. Oh, Gloria, I think you're on mute. I was having a full on conversation all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying thank you so much. If anybody has any other questions, feel free to drop it in the Q&A. Um, one of the things that I noticed, Larry, too, is you did give us a couple of resources in the chat. So thank you so much for that. But I did have a question if like, someone needs to reach out to the IOTEX team or anything else like that. Like, Where is the best way to get in touch with you? Perfect. Yeah, I'm going to drop uh, all of our contact information. So this is Simone and my emails. Uh, but the best way to get in contact with us is we're really uh, starting to jumpstart our developer Discord. Um, also with the help of Jeremy, who's on the call right now. Thank you so much. Um, but we're really trying to put together a lot of these folks that have similar uh, thoughts about the decentralized future, the Web3 for IoT. Um, and you know, we, we historically hosted a lot of our dev activities on Telegram, but really migrating over to Discord. And uh, so definitely join us there. Uh, Simone and uh, Jeremy and myself will be there to answer any of your questions. And you know, looking forward to all the great things you do with this Gitcoin Hackathon. If there's any other uh, questions specifically about the challenges, we're there to answer or there to help. Um, so if you don't get the help you need, shoot us an email, but you'll definitely get everything you need in that Discord. Awesome, that is great. I'm going to also link the Discord um, to the video so when it's uploaded in YouTube and we share it, um, everybody will have that resource available to them. Fantastic. Um, I don't see any other questions, so this is gonna be the last call for questions. If you have a question, go ahead and drop in the chat or the QA. Um, and if not, again, this video is recorded. If we could just say a big, huge thank you to Simone and Larry for all of your input, your information, your knowledge sharing. It was really, really helpful and very insightful. So I appreciate that from my perspective, but I'm sure the community appreciates that as well. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Larry, for, for hosting us. Um, yeah. I was excited to you know work closely with the Gitcoin team for the past couple of months. You guys are rock stars and really I think pushing forward this community-driven development piece. Um, I think if I could just close with something, you know, it's just that IoT. I don't think has has had its day in the blockchain space yet. People don't really recognize the the need for it immediately today. But I really think this is going to be something that will drive the future of connecting what we do in the real world with what we do in the digital world. Right? All these digital assets that we create with keystrokes today, it can be for you know things where where you go, where you walk, where you travel. All these kind of digital assets can be formed 
around that concept as well. So, you know, last year it was DeFi, this year's NFTs. I think the rest of this year will be d dominated by DAOs. Uh, but right after that, people are going to start to realize again, real world data funneling into DAOs compared against historical data. These are the things that drive these autonomous organizations for without the real world data, without the real time aspect, uh, it's stagnant, right? So, um, really, I think, um, yeah, take a look at what we're doing and, uh, you know, we're really building for, for the future and really want to get connected with all you developers out there. So uh, I see Hans, Ryan, Torsten, Stano, thank you guys for all the, the great comments and attention. Um, and yeah, looking forward to working with you guys in the future. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Gloria. You're welcome. All right, everyone. Uh, we, I will uh, see you all after this and then I'll see you next time with the next workshop. Thanks for awesome. coming. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.